And uh, alhamdulillah, I'm also a Muslim. I'm also a Muslim. I converted to Islam when I was about 16, 17. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt, it was the greatest decision I ever made in my life. The greatest decision I ever made in my life. And I'll tell you why. Because Islam is the truth. Islam brings justice to humanity. And the message that the Prophet brought over 1,400 years ago is the greatest message that humankind has ever received. Now, I have a message to the Swedish authorities. I may be English now, but my ancestry comes from Scandinavia. So, alhamdulillah, I am uh, proof that a Scandinavian can embrace Islam and make it a better person. Sweden, your fear, your irrational ignorance regarding Islam and regarding Muslim immigration to Europe is based on a shameful disregard for understanding what truth and justice is really all about. You claim to be a great example of democracy, a great defender of freedom of speech, but yet you are the burners of literature, the burners of poetry, the burners of one of the, the, the greatest message, the greatest book that has ever been created in this dunya, the Holy Quran. You guys are hypocrites, shameless hypocrites, who do nothing but defend hate speech by a minority of extremists and hate preachers. You should be ashamed of yourselves. How dare you try to lecture others, particularly those from the Muslim world, about democracy and freedom of speech and human rights when you promote the destruction of literature, the destruction of books like Nazi Germany did. Shame on you! Shame, Shame on you! On you. Shame that Muslims put up with enough already. Muslims in the Muslim world have their countries bombed, destroyed, occupied and humiliated on a regular basis. Muslims living in the West have their hijabs ripped off just because their name is Muhammad or Abdullah. They're denied job opportunities, they're discriminated against, they're treated like second-class citizens across Europe. Yet, one thing that the Muslims do all the time is they put up with it. And do they do anything in response? Barely anything. But what they do say is that our red line, you can insult us, you can discriminate against us personally, but don't even think that you're going to try to humiliate or attack or desecrate our beloved holy Quran, our beloved holy religion, our beloved legacy and image of the Prophet because if you do that, then there will be a reaction, a reaction like you have never seen before. And I'm talking about Muslims utilizing all means, peaceful means at their disposal to pressure you, to sanction you, to shame you, to humiliate you as you deserve. How dare you lecture the Muslims on how to behave as if we are somehow backwards or barbaric savages. We are going to lecture you on what freedom of speech really is by using it with Islamic ethics, which is about peace, justice, and defending human rights, inshallah. Final message from me. The fact of the matter is, to you, you rat faced Quran burners like this hideous individual who dared to spread the Quran on Eid Day. Okay, final message from me to all of those who burn the Quran, all of those rat faced individuals who think it's acceptable to behave this way against one of the most beloved holy scriptures on the planet to offend 1.5, uh, 1.8 billion Muslims around the world. My message to you is that your actions are as pathetic as you are because the Quran has been memorized by millions of Muslims around the world. You can burn as many Qurans as you want, but as long as there is Muslim breath still alive today, the message of the Quran will continue to spread, it will continue to grow. Inshallah, in my lifetime, Islam will be the largest religion on this planet. Islam has survived the greatest 
most powerful empires have attacked Islam, have attacked the Muslim world, the Mongols for example, and what happened in the end, they converted to Islam, inshallah, and Islam continued to spread. So my message to you is clear, do what you want. Allah is the greatest of planners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will humiliate you in the end, just as he humiliated Sweden previously. And I urge the Muslim world to continue its actions, to defend Islam, to defend Allah and his message, because ultimately, if the Muslim world comes together, then there is nothing stopping. Us. And I think that the numbers that we've seen come out globally, uh, putting Sweden on the back foot, making them apologize and admit that their actions have been Islamophobic, that is the greatest victory that we can achieve. We don't even need Muslim governments to force this. We just need to utilize the power of the Muslim Ummah through mobilization. Thank you very much.